I recently got accepted into the University of Oxford for their master's degree specialised in software engineering and having done some research I just couldn't find anything that actually related to the course itself and I've tried to find reviews, feedbacks to any of the current students or even alumni but just there, there is nothing and especially to websites like Reddit and the student, student forums a lot of questions I've been asked was like 5 years ago or some of them even 10 years ago and something that not even anyone's actually answered the questions so in this video I would like to break down my initial experience of applying into the University of Oxford how I actually got into it how is the actually subjects like in, in the master degrees and possibly this is the first video that's actually in the YouTube that talks about this master degree in, in Oxford universities and hopefully this video will also help people who's actually interested in joining this master degree in the future. According to the official websites, uh, the entry requirement require a strong first class or a strong kind of second class upper university degrees. I got a first um, from my previous undergraduate degree in software engineering, so that's not an issue for me. And it's also worth mentioning that this is a professional degrees, professional master degrees, not academy master degrees. So having having a work experience is really beneficial for this for this masters especially for people like me who has worked for the past eight years like a donkey in the world of a car engineering environment this must have been beneficial for me as well so other than that it is also required a proficiency in english for the higher rate higher levels because this is a postgraduate degree other than that we are also required to have a personal statement for about 500 words and then we also need to find three supporting professional references from our work, from the boss, from colleagues that actually will say we are good Samaritans to do this kind of master's course. Differences. Um, upon applying to this master's degree, there are some differences between this master comparing to any other master from other universities. It's not just professional master's degree versus the academy one, but the most obvious one, the first one is that this is only available part-time and we it's kind of work out for me because I work full-time anyway so having that kind of flexibility has really helped my, my work plus this is not those kind of typical three months full semesters rolling type of courses where you need to join a semester for three months and then join another for the next three months but rather this master degree requires students to join a full intense study week in Oxford in person and then after that we got about six weeks to submit our assignment after the study week. Another thing I, I really like about this masters is that we would already have a full calendar that actually talks about when the subjects are going to be held. So as a part-time student this works beneficial for me because I can plan in, in advance so that I can get some time off from my work just to do the study week in Oxford. There are currently more than 35 subjects in, in this masters and as you can see from popular subjects it tends to get populated as soon as possible and algorithms is really bit populated then until the next 23rd. So some of the not quite so populated like mathematics do have a few quite slots to have plenty of slots left in this year. In total we basically just need to repeat that process for 10 times plus one dissertations then we should be able to graduate as a master's of engineering. It's also worth mentioning that this MSc is also offered an alternative pathway that allows students to graduate as a software and system security where if the student actually decide to take subjects that are more specifically for security then that student will be able to graduate with that title. I will talk more about the subjects that will be taken this coming September in my next videos. Hope that that's kind of it will help people as well. Other than that there is not a lot of differences grading is pretty much the same as the other universities which come in standard distinctions merit and pass right and then in the official website there's tons of information describing how you can actually get those grading i.e an average of 70 percent in in six of the modules that relate to software engineering and then you will get dissertations distinction on that if anyone actually interested to have a look i will have included a link down below regarding of the college in oxford i have I haven't yet to to decide which college I actually wanted to go but according to the website I think uh, most likely I'll go into Kellogg's College because most of the part-time postgraduate students actually go into Kellogg's College. So this master's also has an average of 160 people apply every year and then there's only like 50% that get offered by the University of Oxford and then about 95% usually accepted that offer which is fair enough and in case you got wondering where I actually got this information just in my kind of hours of labors googling about the course itself and then if you're interested just dm me i will just share you the link and 
going through the statistic has helped me tremendously because I knew that there's quite a lot of people actually joining the course and very excited that I will be able to know a lot more friends upcoming master course as well. The cost of this master's, £35,000, is actually a lot of money and it doesn't cover accommodation or transportation or something like that. Again, works out for me because I live like an hour away from Oxford, so travelling into the Oxford for a full study week or for a week isn't really a problem for me. And the full breakdown of the cost of the module itself is that it, it takes four years of re well, university registration, if you take four years, and that costs about £10,000 for the home students. If you are international, that will cost a little bit more. But if you decide to finish that kind of course in, in within two years, then it works out kind of the same anyway. And then after that, plus the 10 modules that you require to take to graduate, uh, each module is about £2,500. So add up all together, it would be £35,000 each just for the course. And then going through our statistics again, you could see that every year possibly the University of Oxford is actually investing about two fully funded and about four partially funded kind of scholarship for the students. So if anyone actually interested to, to do this, there are still chances that you would get funded by University of Oxford. Anyway, I'm going with self-funded, so it's always good to know that University of Oxford is actually invested in this course, although it's just a part-time postgraduate. To be honest, I only chose to do this master's because of my Asian toxic trade. And if I don't graduate from Oxford universities, my family basically zoned me, right? But frankly, I always wanted to do this straight after my undergraduate degree, but because of time and finance, I think this is the best time to do it now. And very, very excited to kind of be able to know the new friends that are actually joining me in this coming September. By the way, I've also made a Discord channel where I think we could potentially grow a community for those who is actually interested in joining us in the software engineering course in the University of Oxford. And potentially, I would like to get some alumni to share their, their experience, how's their life like in Oxford, and most importantly, how impactful the MSc is after they graduated, right? So that's the end of this video. In my next one, I will talk about the subjects I'm going to take in this coming September. If you have any other question you would like to know, leave down comments down below. I'll be happy to answer you and then I'll see you in the next one then.